So you want a new furry four-legged friend in your life. The first step to becoming a successful puppy parent is typically the most important, but also often one of the most overlooked. So let's investigate. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Pet Doc Sherlock, where we help pet parents and families solve the mysteries of pets. I'm sure you can picture it now. You can even dream about it, just running through a meadow with your new puppy bounding next to you. It's just life with a puppy. It's just rainbows and butterflies and puppy kisses and curling up with your new best friend to watch a movie and cleaning up vomit off the hardwood floors and scrubbing urine out of area rugs and standing outside in the pouring, freezing rain just praying your puppy will use the bathroom at 2 a.m. Let's be real. I mean, life with puppies is pretty amazing, about 90% of the time, but that other 10% might be things we didn't really plan for or things we didn't expect, and we need to be ready for that as best we can. So. Let's have a little bit of a serious conversation here and realize that puppies are going to become dogs. I mean, of course, but that's about a 12-year or more commitment. And so that cute little puppy that you really want, that you want to bring home, we're talking about a long-term relationship. In fact, not planning for that long-term relationship is one of the biggest reasons that dogs end up in shelters each and every year. And there are about 3.4 million dogs in shelters across the United States each year. So let's look at that for just a second. And, and let me say, if you're unsure about getting a puppy or you've already been through the puppy thing and you don't want to do that again, or you're just looking for a good companion, then by all means, please first consider adopting one of those dogs. You will make a difference in their life and likely even be saving their life. So please think about that first and foremost. But if your heart is set on a puppy, your family wants a puppy, um, there is nothing wrong with that. They need homes too. So uh, we're going to break it down into kind of 10 main things that I think are important to think about and plan for. And we'll look at each one of those and break them down as we go. The first step in planning for your puppy actually involves mental preparation, and that's patience. You need to plan to be patient. This is something that I'll talk about in a lot of videos, but especially the puppy series. It'll probably be in every single one, and that's because patience is key in developing that mutual trust and respect that you want from your puppy. I know that it gets hard sometimes when you're waiting outside and your dog will not go to the bathroom and then you bring it in and it immediately walks over to the rug in the kitchen and pees. I understand that it's even more frustrating to go through your third pair of tennis shoes in two weeks because your puppy needed something to chew on. Now, those are very frustrating situations, and it's very easy for us to lash out and to yell or even kind of um, hit your dog, heaven forbid. But if you did, you just destroyed everything you worked so hard to accomplish. So please remember that it starts with patience, planning for patience, and that's all in the mind. The second component to planning for a puppy is preparing your house. You need to puppy-proof your home. That means going through and finding all the hazards, all the things that your puppy might want to eat, all the things your puppy might want to swallow. So I've seen lots of Labrador puppies that we've had to take socks out of. So pick up clothes, pick up toys, make sure that wires aren't lying around that they can chew on. Uh, make sure that there's no poisonous plants that are easy for them to get a hold of. Um, and not only with hazards, but in your home, you need to create some puppy spaces. So an area that you can leave your puppy when you're not at home, an area to put the crate to create somewhat of a den so that your puppy has a safe place to go to. We'll cover crate training in another video, uh, but it's important to have a space assigned for that. And then another space for your puppy to have breakfast and dinner, to eat. Um, dogs are very used to having a routine, and so it's really nice to have these areas kind of separated off and know where they're going to be ahead of time. The 
third component of getting ready for a new puppy is making sure that any other pets that are in the home, any cats or dogs that are already there, are ready for a new puppy. So consider how they interact with you and your family and how they interact with other animals. If they've never seen another dog, then um, it may mean that you need to prepare for a little bit of a longer introduction phase. They may be used to being queen of all they survey, and now this little thing's come in and is stealing attention, is eating some other kind of food, and just generally taking over. Uh, so it's a good idea to have your dog interact with other dogs that you know, if you have friends with dogs, um, and then have them maybe bring them over, see how that goes so it helps you plan ahead of time. And it'll help you know if you need one-on-one -on -one training. And if you do need training because your dog is a little too defensive of its current territory, then make sure you find a trainer that is all about positive reinforcement. The fourth category that we need to plan for is kids. If you have kids, they are part of this as well, and everybody needs to be all in. So it's not just going to be the parent's responsibility to take care of the dog. Everyone is going to interact with this puppy, and everyone's going to want to be a part of this puppy's life. And usually that's not the hard part. It's making sure your kids are aware of boundaries and making sure that they know what the puppy is and isn't allowed to do. Uh, it's a great environment for kids to learn responsibility and growing up with a dog really is something special. The fifth part of planning for your puppy involves planning on the size your dog will be. A Great Dane is born larger than a teacup chihuahua could ever dream of being. And so that comes with several different things. One is the larger the dog, the more it will cost. And that seems unfair at first, but if you think about it, a larger dog is going to eat a lot more. A larger dog is going to need a larger dog bed. And a larger dog will have higher vet bills. That's not us as veterinarians being prejudiced to larger dogs, but we dose a lot of medications based on weight and based on size. In the human world, there's usually an average um, size that they use to determine generic uh, medication dosages. Whereas, again, if you look at a Great Dane versus a teacup Yorkie, if they need an antibiotic, you're probably not going to give a two-pound dog the same dose as a 160-pound dog. So your vet bills will be higher, with a larger dog. And that kind of ties into our next segment, which is number six, which is cost. Dogs will cost you money. Even if you didn't pay anything up front or just a small adoption fee, the ASPCA uh, did a study that shows that dogs will cost on average, it's a wide range, but anywhere from $400 to $1,200 in their first year. So let's think about this. You've got food costs. You've got costs for materials like a crate, dog bowls, dog beds, dog clothes, if you like. And then you've got costs of vet bills for the booster vaccines, spays, and everything else. And most studies show that the vast majority of dogs will end up having a incident in which they become very sick and require a couple thousand dollars in vet bills. So having that put aside is very beneficial. So just because you were able to pick up a free puppy in the parking lot of, of a Walmart or wherever else doesn't mean they're not going to cost you money. And it does take at least some money each month for preventive medications such as heartworm and flea prevention and a good quality food. That would be a minimum uh, for me in order to make sure that that dog has a happy, healthy life. The seventh component of planning for your dog is lifespan. We talked about this a little bit before, but your puppy's going to become a dog, and the lifespan of that dog, on average, is going to be 12 or 13 years. Now, we talked a little bit about size, and in general, larger dogs live shorter lives than smaller dogs. So if we look at our Great Dane again, the average lifespan for Great Danes is 8 or 9 years. Whereas the average lifespan for a Chihuahua, as long as they don't get heart disease, is 15 to 18 years. So we're in this for the long haul, and it's a very long commitment, so we have to be prepared for various things that will happen throughout those years. The eighth category is breed. 
Now, there's a lot of strong opinions on mixed breed versus pure breed dogs, and I don't necessarily fall into one camp or the other, but there are definitely pros and cons to each. If you choose a specific breed, make sure you research that breed very well. Breeds are liked because they have certain attributes that people want, both in their attitude and demeanor and in their health. So make sure you look at the pros and cons of each. Some breeds are really good with kids. Some breeds, like herding breeds, may take a little more time to get used to kids and a little more training in how to interact with them. Additionally, make sure you know the most common health issues. So, for example, one of the most common breeds in the United States has consistently been the Golden Retriever. But I've talked to a lot of Golden Retriever owners who didn't know that they're also towards the top of breeds for cancer. And the cancer that they tend to get the most is lymphoma. And so if you know that going into it, then you kind of know what signs to look out for as your dog gets older and it doesn't come as such a shock and you can prepare yourself a little bit ahead of time. My ninth step in planning is time. You need to make sure that you have a lot of time to spend with your puppy. They take a lot of training. They are learning everything as they get older. It is like school on fast forward for puppies because they age so much faster than we as people do. So they're constantly learning from their environment and you need time to train them. Just basic commands. You need time to spend with them. So you build that mutual respect we talked about. You need time to exercise them. And so this is probably one of the most important important steps in planning is making sure that your schedule is not so busy that you're going to get a puppy, you're going to spend a little bit of time with it, and then you're just going to kind of leave it at home to its own devices. My wife and I, we, we kind of made that mistake a little bit with our dachshund, and he's got some character development issues. Uh, he doesn't introduce himself to people very well. He is a loud mouth about a lot of things, and he doesn't greet people at the door very well. And a lot of that is because we got him at a time in our lives that we were so busy, it was very hard to work with him. Now, he listens really well. He is a great dog overall, but some of those character problems that he has are our fault. And we could have avoided if we had the time to devote to him. And finally, number 10. I'm going to sound a little bit like a broken record here, but number 10 is, again, patience. Now, we've talked about patience with your puppy, patience with your dog, and making sure you don't ruin that trust, but there's another category that you need to have patience in even before you have your puppy, and that's patience in the process of finding that puppy itself. You need to be patient to make sure everything is right at home, make sure everybody is ready, and make sure you pick the right puppy that fits you and your family. There is no such thing as the perfect puppy. You might come across a gem that learns quickly, that loves everyone, and that just becomes the best dog ever, but that's a very rare thing. So just make sure that you are aware that Time, the time will come that you come across the best dog for you and you'll know when it's right. That wraps up our video on planning for your puppy. I hope those 10 things were helpful. I'll make sure to list them in the description to the video. They're not in any particular order of importance or anything. They're just kind of different categories that I thought about that can help you set up for success before you bring that new puppy home. We're going to have a video that follows this one on how to pick a healthy puppy. But if this video was helpful, please hit like. If you'd like to see the next content that we're coming out with, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I've always wanted this to be an interactive space. I am here to help you and your pets, not myself. So please leave me comments. Go to my website, PetDocSherlock.com. Shoot me an email. What more do you want to learn? What do you want to know about your pets? What do you want to know about vets? Um, I'm open to a lot of questions, so please send them to me and I'll do my best to answer those. That's all I've got for now, so as always, remember to keep your pets happy and healthy.